Hello, Keith. Hey, Jonathan. What you got? Well, I've got something I've been using to present on the last few days uh, or few weeks, as it were, uh, an example of using relationships to help us show missing data on maps. Nice. Yeah. So this is a really common use case for us where we have uh, survey data or surveillance data and we have missing data and okay. we end up having places on a map that we would want to show, but there's nothing there and we need to fill that in or impute that. Right. So I set up an example of this um, with some data downloaded off the internet from the health info base in Canada. Um, so this is the percentage of population for each Canadian province that is reporting less than having a high school education across a couple of years worth of data. Okay. So this all looks good in a table and then throw it into a map for 2018. Looks pretty good mm -hmm. as a map. Nice to see a map of Canada. Yeah. Something a little different than U.S. Superstore. Right. And then switch to 2019 here. And I've just Ooh. lost the whole northern part of the country. Right. So why does that happen? That happens because those top provinces, they don't have any records for 2019, I'm guessing. Yep. It's exactly that. And that's something that in this original layout of our data, um, whoops, this was our original layout of our data, wasn't so obvious. Mm -hmm. And in this case, going back to this alternative layout view, here I've put year on columns, and we can see that Northwest Territories, Nunavut, and Yukon all have blank spaces for 2019. Right, just because and maybe they haven't reported yet. Exactly. Right. So missing data, that never happens, right? It happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And in this case, these aren't, just to be clear, these aren't nulls in the data. This is mm -hmm. actual data that doesn't exist. If there was a null here when I hovered over it, I'd still get a tooltip. Right. Totally. Thanks for pointing that. It's one of the things you and I talk about all the time is the difference between a null value, which has a record, but the value for that um, data point is missing and, and that's a null record versus in this case, those records are just absent from the data and, and, and they're missing altogether. Yep. They just don't exist. Mm -hmm. So in our ideal map, here's the same map here showing um, 2018 and then I click on 2019 and now I can see Ooh. these are here and they're grayed mm -hmm. out and I hover over them and I have tool tips saying we mm -hmm. have no reported data. Oh, right. Yeah. You um, even got your little, little helpful tool tip there that says these provinces exist. It's just that they haven't reported yet. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I built this out with a dual axis and I'm going to unpack the dual axis here so we can see what's going on and then we'll back our way into into what's happening and talk about it more. Okay. So here on this marks card that we're looking at, I've got my country and province from my original data. Uh -huh. And so if I switch between 2018 and 19, that's showing that. Right. And then on the other marks card, which is in the background, uh -huh. I'll activate that one here, we have this province list that we're using that is always showing all of the marks. Right. And so that's kind of so like your, your scaffold or your, um, I like to use the word monastic data. That's, that's kind of like mm -hmm. your master data. I'm moving my vocabulary away from the word master towards monastic. That's your kind of data that's in the priesthood. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's siphoned away in a place. It doesn't change very often. It's nice and quiet. It's constant. Mm -hmm. It's monastic. It's mono. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And the, the, the mono meaning one is going to show up again in just a moment here. Oh. Um, yeah. So we have two marks cards, and these are effectively being independent from one another because uh -huh. of how we've set up the data source in the relationships. So mm -hmm. let's look at that now. So I'm going to edit my relationships data source. 
And I have two logical tables. So my left logical table is my high school completion data that's got 25 rows in it uh -huh. um, with the different provinces and everything. So that's your transaction then, data. Yeah. There's my transactional data uh -huh. or fact table, if you're using that kind of language. Okay. And then I have a list of provinces. And this is this monastic or skeleton or scaffold data set that just has one row per province. Um, yeah. So okay. So I guess we could say we're, we're using that, that monastic data as a scaffold for the transaction data. No, no. Yep. This is, this is the fun part of this. Okay. Is that if I was using that as a scaffold for the transaction data, um, that wouldn't be enough. And, and I think we, we've got some other podcasts that'll go into that a, a little bit more. Right. Um, in this case, the thing that we're doing is we want this one to always show no matter what. And so if we really, the scaffold would have to include the province and the year in order to be that complete scaffold of all, all possible values. Mm -hmm. In this case, though, we don't actually have to do that because of the magic of relationships. Okay. So here I've set up my relationship on one equals one. So, and these don't exist in the data source. They are just relationship calculations, which were introduced in version 2020.3. So I have one here and then one on my provinces side. Right. So you're just doing kind of a one-to-one -one relationship, um, which the first thing that comes to my mind is um, like Cartesian join. Right. Yes. Cause I do that. I do that one-to-one -one thing pretty mm -hmm. often when I want kind of a cross product between two data sets, I'll just join on one equals one. And this being relationships, we're not going to get that cross product. So I set up a drawing of this. Okay. Um, okay. So I did this drawing and pardon my terrible handwriting. Uh, I yeah. will talk through it. Okay. So the A and the B here are our two logical tables. We've got our high school data here on the left and uh -huh. the province data on the right. Okay. So we are, um, so what Tableau is going to do is it's going to query the high school data for that high school marks card. Uh -huh. And that marks card is only using fields from the high school data. Uh -huh. So this query on the, our table A, the left-hand table, is mm -hmm. going to be independent from the query of our province data on the right. Right. This is reminding me of that other features. episode we did we did recently where if each marks card gets its own query. Yes. Yep. This is showing this is taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Um of that happening. Okay. So here um so we have this logical query and logical table a query and logical table b and then tableau is doing this join and mm -hmm. i've got join in quotes here okay. on one equals one but because those are and it's keeping the level of detail of each each query um in those results and the filter that's on our year and the high school data isn't actually affecting any of the results on the province side of the right. data. So our province shapes are always being displayed. So let me explain it back to you just to make sure I understand. Mm -hmm. Your transactional data is table A on the left. And that's the thing that has the year in it. And because table A, the transactional data is the only logical table that's, that's there in that marks card, you can filter on year 2018, year 2019, and that transactional Canada data, the, the provinces that are reported are gonna disappear from that marks card from um, when you filter to 2019. But because a relationship isn't the same thing as a join, and you're relating on one equals one to this other data set that is constant, that always has all of the provinces in it, then just because the first marks card lost a handful of provinces that hadn't reported yet, the second marks card is there um, in the view to serve as backup. Mm -hmm. And with the, with the relationship, keeping the level of detail of each, 
we're not getting a full Cartesian join of every province from A matched with every province from B. Because we're relating on one equals one. Whereas if we had yep. related like on province, for example, then that relationship on province is ultimately going to resolve to a join. And so if we were relating on province and those provinces didn't exist in 2019, then, then they would fall out. And this is the reason you're relating on that generic one equals one, which is always true. Correct. Yes. Got it. So going back to Tableau here, so we've set up this monastic table of all of our provinces, and mm -hmm. then we're able to get them to always show up, Pretty regardless nice. of what year we're filtering on. And mm -hmm. there is a little cost that, in this case, we do have these provinces that we do have data for that are effectively being hidden under the pro under the the data that we really want to display um, so you're kind of like re-rendering those pro you're re-rendering those provinces twice so so down below yes. it says you have 23 marks and some of those are in duplicate mm -hmm. with with one another um yes. and you're all right with that yep yeah so with this as a a way of doing things um this is something that we're doing again and again in our different maps, um, just so that we can show our every province in the country or every district or every health area, no matter what, um, what the data actually has in it. Super, I love it. Great. All right, well, thanks for letting me share with this with you. Oh yeah, yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, I'm gonna keep that one in my back pocket. I'll see you soon. All right. Okay. Bye.